G'day guys, welcome back to another review and today I'll be reviewing Sydney and Geelong, Geelong and Sydney, I usually go Geelong and the team but uh, yeah as we can see Sydney got the job done by two points uh, in a bit of a nail biter it has to be said and um, yeah I mean it was a good game but uh, first quarter was um, you know, very good by the Cats so they sort of, uh, yeah, jumped out. A very nice 28 point lead at quarter time. I think got out to a 29 point lead thereabouts. And from there on in, uh, Sydney just, yeah, had it on their terms for longer um, throughout the game. And, yeah, a really disappointing, I suppose, result um, for the Cats, given that they have Richmond next week. And, you know, if you play Richmond at the G, um, good luck winning against them, uh, no matter who you are. Uh, so it was just one that you had to win and it's going to be one more so where you come back and look at the end of the year and go Oh, that was the difference between you finishing top four or making the eight <laughs> um, When you lose to Adelaide and Sydney early on in the, in the year and um, I mean Melbourne's flying so Yeah, I mean fair enough losing to those guys, but um, Yeah, we're not handling I don't know the lesser like teams as well. They, Sydney did have their colours lowered last week to the Suns, um, and then they lost to the Giants the week before. Who you know they're okay, um, but yeah, just just disappointing, I suppose. Really, um, we'll, we'll obviously talk about the yeah the decisions late. Um, obviously, with the game earlier in the year with the Brisbane game, I'm not going to be hypocritical and say oh those two. Very controversial uh, decisions right at the end with Sid Sydney and Geelong game. Could have cost Geelong, but uh, I'd be hypocritical in saying that even though I said yes, Blitzars was holding the ball in round two um, against Brisbane, that you can't be relying on umpiring decisions uh, that late in the game because, let's be honest, they're not going to be brave enough to pay them, um, especially when it's near a goal. They, they uh, only if it's absolutely bleedingly obvious, but yeah. What I will say is that I'm sure it'll come out in the wash that, yeah, it was more than 15 that kicked the camera and I couldn't believe it was play on. And uh, Henderson got holding the ball earlier in the game um, for the exact same thing. I suppose he kind of dived on it, didn't really make an attempt and had another two or three seconds been on the clock. Robottom might get pinged for holding the ball, but um, Robottom just got the ball, dived on it, didn't make any attempt to get it out. It's holding the ball, but... Um, Again, uh, Geelong kicked 12 16, and that's the story of the night. Um, it's a tale of two teams that, you know, just uh, one took their chances and made them every post a winner, and um, the other didn't really make the most of their opportunities. Geelong were looking really good in the first term. Um, they had it on their terms. Definitely, that uncontested mark game was um, really up, had a lot of the ball, uh, had field position, uh, pressure was really good around the ground, and hitting up targets nicely and then, uh, you know, our forwards were cashing in and sort of making it hard for uh, for Sydney to score. So, yeah, that, that was um, that was pleasing to see. It just looked like, yeah, quite a cohesive unit and our biggest score for the year in the first term. You would have thought kicking 41 points in the opening term uh, away would probably get you a win nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, but uh, not enough on this occasion. As the game wore on, the Swans... Uh, stifled our ball movement. Um, they always, whenever we kicked inside 50, our ball delivery in the 50 wasn't great. But whenever we went up forward, it was um, a, a thousand Swans uh, players down back, and somehow it was one on ones up the field. So I, I don't know where all our players were, but yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. I, we're four and three now, and um, yeah, I mean that pretty much from uh, quarter time onwards. Yeah, the Swans had uh had all the play and all the say so and when you kick two goals six in the last quarter i mean the th the whole story of this is sydney 14 goals six and it felt like it felt like every time they went inside 50 they were scoring getting a goal or doing something crazy um uh, and geelong had eight more scoring shots and still you know down in the final yeah final stages and i, I think some key plays late obviously papley uh, very good finish, but Stewart and uh, Atkins both ball watching. I don't know how either of them just didn't shut him down to be an option. They both chased the ball and got sucked into the ball, and then Papley was left on his own, kicked a goal. Uh, that was highlighted at the end. But yeah, I mean, a good start and a lot done right by the Cats, but also, 
yeah, you can't kick them down too hard uh, for this one in particular because as far as numbers go, you'd be pretty pleased from a coaching stance. Geelong won everything quite convincingly. That's probably what's really disappointing. And yeah, this is one of those games where you're just going to go back and go, oh, gee, if we didn't lose to Sydney, <laughs> um, maybe things would be different. But yeah, we had a lot more of the footy. See, look at that, plus 26 inside 50s. Sydney, 20, uh, every second time they went inside 50, they scored, whether it was a goal or a point. Um, yeah, I mean, they're only the touch more efficient inside 50, it's just the Cats didn't kick as straight as they'd like, and Sydney often make a kick inaccurately because of the pressure they apply and that they put 100 players behind the ball. Um, we won the clearances, and we'll, that's probably where it really, as the game wore on, Sydney were able to just get field position and, and win it at the source. Um, and then our defence was all of a sudden under pressure and every time they went in there, they just like, somehow scored. That was what we were doing really well early on and then we lost our way. That's an unbelievable... That is it's incredible. Often when Geelong, when they contest a possession count, they just win the game. That, that's a smashing plus 33 and we still lost. It all comes down to um, conversion on goal, really, this game. Uh, we had much more of the footy on the outside as well. We always get a lot of the footy, and when we get 100 marks, normally that's a pretty safe sign that, you know, we're, we've got the game well under control. But Sydney, yeah, they they had a lot of control as well. So they had more marks inside 50, and, yeah, I mean, this bit kills you. We just had a lot of missed shots. Out tackled them as well. So from a work rate point of view, tackles inside 50 was good. From a work rate point of view, and... All those things marry up. It's just that that class and that conversion at the end, which we just weren't able to do. Hawkins missed a few. Um, you know, Duncan dropped a mark and uh, inside fifty, and you know, Cameron wasn't paid, and yeah, that just a lot of snaps that just didn't make the distance or went under the full. But anyway, we'll get to the votes. Mitch Duncan gets my three. Uh, he got a goal next to his name. Twenty nine touches. Seven marks, a couple of tackles, six clearances. He was really good, especially early. A lot of the Cats were good early, then Sydney got on top, and then obviously if Sydney are on top, it's hard for you to be playing well. But, yeah, I like Duncan, the way he went about it. Um, yeah, he's always a pretty smooth kick of the ball. Guthrie gets the two votes for mine. He got 30 touches, nine clearances. He, he's always uh, always good in the centre square. And... Um, yeah, yeah, he's he just he's a workhorse and he it really stuff in the contest. Stu or Stuart or Henry, I'm going with Henry for one vote. I've been very generous on Stuart early and probably that play just got me offside there. But Henry was everywhere. He was roaming around. He got 23 touches, eight marks. Uh, played a bit in the ruck. He was just sort of roaming everywhere. Took some really good marks and um, yeah, he was just really involved with the play. So I like the way he went about it. So it. Um, yeah, he was really good throughout the night and probably um, a little bit stiff not to get a vote. But, yeah, no, he, his contribution was good. Stewart's always solid, um, like another All-Australian jumper. Smith was pretty handy, he had 22. And Dalhouse played probably his best game in one and a half years or two years, I, I don't know. But he, he was actually getting involved with the you know, the contest and he kicked a goal, but he missed a few. Many goal, kicked one, two as well, 21 touches. Um Parfit was decent around the ground. Close kick two, got 18. I like the way he went about it. It's the first time he's ever kicked multiple goals in his career, so he'll be stoked. Um, yeah, <laughs> Hayden McLean kicked four goals. Like He, he bet Cameron and Hawkins uh, on a merry dance, but yeah, he just, he just kept marking them 10 metres out from goal and kicking goals. So Anyway, back to the Cats. Atkins, I liked his game, but... Again, that moment late, just uh, a moment he liked to have back again. Clark uh, was solid, not too bad. He had a couple of interesting um, moments. He had 18. Hawkins was very quiet, 10 touches. Uh, I think Malikin was on Cameron. But, uh, yeah, Hawkins was just kept yeah, very quiet, kicked a goal. Uh, Henderson was good. Um, he had 18. Um, he takes the game on and, you know, he's a good kick. Rowan kicked 2-2. Two, two. Um, his presence was good and he was quite uh, yeah, quite useful. Again, would have been beautiful if he kicked 3 or 4. But uh, yeah, Rowan, you know, really good pressure on the forward line. Uh, Narkel was uh, lively. He, he gave it a red-hot crack. He got 15. Blitzarves uh, was inspired at the start of the last quarter. He got like three clearances on his left foot. 
If they only marked him down for two clearances, that'd be crazy if he did, because I feel like he had three, but that's fine. Uh, Buse took the game on. He played well. Myers went off injured. Uh, he kicked a goal. Cameron got three goals straight. Could have potentially had four, had the umpire um, just pay the conventional mark. Stanley lowered his colours uh, tonight, unfortunately. Hickey... I think he uh, demolished him, so I had him out for breakfast, and Zach Guthrie came on as a medical sub. Uh, did okay with, with six touches there, so. <sighs> yeah, those are my votes, and those are the stats, and that's a bit of a look at the game. We'll have a bit of a look at next week. We've got Richmond, uh, MCG Friday night, so a massive game. And, uh, again, the Cats don't lose two in a row very often, but... Oh, I think they will, being it's Richmond at the MCG. They're a pretty hard customers to come up against. They've definitely had a measure quite easily the last few times. I think the last time we defeated them was, yeah, it was uh, in early 2019 when we were on fire and Richmond had seven or eight injuries and um, we won by 70-something points and we're like, geez, we're just beating the, well, what would have been, they been then? The, the preliminary finalists of the year before that were, Pitch to uh, win another flag, and they did, obviously. That's the last time we've beaten them. They've uh, had, a, had a measure the last few times, and we struggled to score more than, yeah, 70, 70 points. So hopefully we can get uh, some scores on the board. But, yeah, Richmond, they're so hard to come up against. They, they stifle your board movement. They Even if you're up by four goals, you know, they'll, they'll come back and hit you right between the eyes. And you have to just uh, you have to destroy them to be any chance so um and even if you're up you know have a decent lead at half time we've seen it so many times the dogs um the cats in the grand final cats in 2019 prelim you have to be seven eight goals up to be yeah any chance almost but yeah so um that's the, a bit of a look at the game at next week so yeah, i expect richmond would probably win four or five goals again seems to be the the common trend but uh yeah tonight obviously sydney too good um Whenever they went forward, yeah, they looked dangerous and they made the most of their chances and very opportunistic. And obviously this game is just a result of one side that was efficient and effective and accurate versus uh, one that was probably a bit sloppy. So I'm not super disheartened. I'm disappointed, but uh, not disheartened like I probably usually would be. But yeah, uh, after the siren, or siren sounding, uh, you know, the phone got a bit of a, a, bit of a workout, but uh, you know, that's, that's how it goes. And Sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. Uh, you, you win, you win a couple of close ones, and sometimes you you lose some as well. But anyway, Swans by two, uh, Cats to four and three, and have the Tigers in a big game next week. So guys, hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to subscribe away, like the video, uh, so the YouTube algorithm just puts the content in front of all the lovely people that want to see more Cats content and reviews and me crying about us losing and me celebrating when we win. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the next video.